Who's hosting this show? Hi, this is Amy Lewis. Or makeup. This is Engineers Unplugged. Hi, this is Amy Lewis. Welcome back for another awesome episode of Engineers Unplugged. We're here with Bill and Jim. And Bill had a few questions about ACI, and luckily enough, Jim's got some answers. So, Bill, take it away. Hey, Jim. So I just sat through your uh, session here at Vero Madness, and uh, you presented on ACI. I thought it was really interesting. And uh, I guess to start out, what are some challenges that today's data centers are facing as far as networking? Um, and, you know, what kind of impact do they have on the business? Yep. Thanks, Bill. So, I mean, I like to boil it down to a very simple thing, which is in our data centers, we deploy applications. We operate applications. We have to know when they're failing or are having problems. And then we deprovision applications. And we just need to make that a much easier uh, thing to do. OK, and so, so ACI is obviously Cisco's approach to resolving those challenges. Uh, I see you've got something drawn up on the whiteboard here. This looks like a physical architecture. How does this physical architecture differ from what we typically see today? And so networks of the past were sort of ad hoc. I mean, there were all kinds of different architectures. Um, and as a result, we couldn't build them with the same level of certainty and availability that we can if we have a known topology. So the first thing we're doing is sort of taking an existing switch and breaking it into uh, sort of a disaggregated switch. So if you look at our 7K, um, that has fabric cards in the back, it's got line cards in the front, and we can look at this as a disaggregated switch architecture where we can incrementally scale the fabric, um, not to the constraints of a, a physical switch chassis, but to our heart's content out. So we can continually add capacity um, to the switch infrastructure. And we also have, like line cards in a switch, these leaf switches which plug into all the um, spines and provide you know, additional bandwidth capacity so we can incrementally add leaves and add spines and grow beyond the constraints of physical chassis. Um, rather than having a supervisor like we would in a typical switching scenario, we have an external controller called an application policy infrastructure controller. And we use the word policy in this case because uh, it's not really having to do with the forwarding in the fabric. Um, it's really just to tell these devices what to do when things happen in the fabric, and they can do them by themselves. Uh, yet we still have high availability, so we recommend at least three of these controllers across the fabric. And you can see they're physically UCSC series servers plugged into the leaf switches in this topology. And we've innovated a whole lot around the fabric itself. So if you're um, looking at availability, which is usually a core requirement for our customers, um, availability would be, um, you know, if any one of these links fails, we can reroute and recover with those links within 100 microseconds. From an application performance standpoint, we are treating um, transactional flows differently, so we'll give them priority and applications will run better on the fabric. From an efficiency standpoint, we're load balancing all these links and, um, and then picking the best one. Every 100 microseconds, we're looking and choosing the best link so we can take even big, long flows and distribute them across any one of these paths. And because it's a known topology, if anything fails, again, we recover extremely fast. So that's just the basics of the fabric. And then it's all about deploying applications. So if I wanted to provision something that's the red application, which you see you know, here, um, I can send a document into my controller. It provisions that entire application. It could be web tier, app tier, database tier. Uh, the fabric itself becomes the firewall. I no longer have to have the firewall, or if I still want traditional firewalls, um, I can plug them in or anywhere in the fabric, like over here, put a firewall, and this firewall can be used for the red application or the blue application. Gotcha. So, so obviously, physically, it's a different architecture, but the, the major paradigm shift here is, is a logical paradigm shift, right? How, how we look at traffic flows, how we categorize traffic flows, and how we prioritize traffic flows. So if you could, real quick, maybe whiteboard out or diagram for us, sort of how, how do you logically view um, the network from an application perspective, and what advantages does that offer from an operational standpoint over a, you know, a typical architecture that you see today? Um, so applications are actually pretty pretty complex and there's a lot of components to it. As you come into a data center, you're going to you know, come in through some kind of wide area network router. Um, then you may have a, a WAN, WAN accelerator. Gardner would call that a walk. <laughs> um, you might have a, uh, a firewall that's protecting um, you know, an app behind a load balancer. 
So you'd all have a SLB, server load balancer, firewall, and then you might have an app tier, which, or a web tier, which is this presentation layer of an application. Uh, behind that, you might have another firewall, and then an app tier, and then I'm running out of room, so I'll just put a database tier with no firewall. Um, all of these components, and then there's interactions with other applications, so this is just a single application, but all these components um, actually provide uh, or are part of your application. And today we have no visibility when you go through a normal network infrastructure as to what components and what elements are associated with what application and what you know tenant if it's a cloud environment. Um, so what we can do with ACI is you can identify all of these components. They can each provide a health score of zero to 100 um, from all the elements themselves, plus the intermediate links also provide, we're measuring end-to-end -end latency of the fabric and also drops of packets across the fabric. So each one of these links also contributes a health score. So you get an entire health score of this application that may be 95, and you drill down on that 95 and you find out that uh, you know, the, the firewall's oversubscribed um, and it's reporting maybe a 75, right? So you have this application visibility, which we never had before, so you can take any of the components associated at a reporting level, drill down, find out what's wrong based on drops, latency, um, service node health, uh, any of the web uh, or the application tiers or components. And then you know this contributes up to a tenant score. Um, so we can understand that if there's multiple applications, and this one's at 95 and I have another application at 99, you know, my tenant is running at 97. That's really, really interesting. And that's, I mean, that's really the, the benefit of software-defined networking is that you get to take a holistic view at the application level. Uh, we're running a little short on time, but real quick, uh, how does this affect provisioning, deprovisioning, moving from like test dev to staging to production, uh, that type of stuff as far as application deployment? Um, so really what I didn't say is we're, we're managing the policies on all these through um, something called a, a device package. And we're opening up an ecosystem so all the different types of vendors can participate in this. And we're putting the, the actual uh, policies on there. And the big thing is when applications get removed, we're removing those policies. No more legacy firewall rules, no, no, no more legacy application-specific configuration left in the infrastructure when you deprovision something. Okay, I can't believe they did that so quickly. That is a, a lot of clarity around ACI in a really short amount of time, so thank you, Bill, for asking all those great questions. We do have one more thing to score, and that is your unicorn drawing ability. So it is, in fact, unicorn time. So uh, let's see it. Let's see your best unicorn. Oh, you, you don't know about this. I love it when a new guest doesn't know. You've got to draw a unicorn for us. Ready? <laughs> you, you, oh, choose your color. What color is your unicorn? That's an ultimate question. Go, guys. You've got it. Yep. Oh, no. Go for it. If, you're, if your unicorn doesn't look good, you may not want to have a color that shows up. Your choice. <laughs> They remembered the horns this time. And I enjoy the uh, the implied, unicorn implied. <laughs> well done, guys. This is a really great episode. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Jim. Thank Thanks, you. Bill. And we'll see you next time on Engineers Unplugged.